Can I be honest with y'all real quick? Because I had to realize this about myself, okay? Everybody wants to talk about all the narcissists and the sociopaths and the emotional abusers out here in the world and all the horrible bad things that they are doing. And I totally get it. Like, I'm not saying these people are not doing horrible bad things. I'm not advocating for their actions. So don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is that I had to realize this about myself. I'm part of the problem too. Ooh. You know why I'm part of the problem? It's because I kept allowing it. I kept giving my power away, you guys. I kept accepting the bare minimum. And I had to realize that I can't really get super upset at the abusers if I'm the one allowing myself to be abused. Are you tired? I mean, really, are you tired of getting played in all your relationships? Are you tired of people cheating on you all the time? Are you tired of falling in love and feeling like everything is nice and then realizing the person that you're with is fake and phony? Well, <laughs> I was tired too. And I'm about to tell you why you keep getting played in your relationships. Because it's not right and it's not fair. And it's something that we need to address. Come here, come on. It's cause you're playing yourself. Okay, are we not ready to have that conversation yet? Let me know if we're not ready to have that conversation yet because I can wait. Psych, I'm not gonna wait. We need to talk about this now. Hello, you guys. Welcome and welcome back to Mom Jeans by Nutcase. It is yours truly, <laughs> the Nutcase Case Nicole, and I'm back again with the shenanigans. Be sure to like the video, you guys. Be sure to subscribe. Put a comment below and let me know when and where you were when you realized that you were playing yourself in these relationships and what made it click for you, okay? I wanna hear you guys tell your stories because even if you don't think so, your stories can definitely serve as a benefit to another person. And that is the whole mission of this channel. I also want you guys to know to be encouraged in whatever situation you're in because no matter where you are when you find this video, there's definitely hope and faith and potential for your life to turn around and change. You just have to want to, okay? So y'all, we're gonna get into the readings <laughs> not readings, wrong channel. We're gonna get into the reasons, the top three reasons why I continue to play myself in these relationships and why I feel like so many of us who are honest and genuine when it comes to love are getting played right now. <laughs> because it's actually not the other person's fault completely. And that's one thing, bear with me now, okay? Bear with me because I know it might sound strange and I know you might not wanna admit it, but it's actually not completely the other person's fault. It's actually mostly your fault because you keep allowing them to do things that you know are beneath you and things you know that you don't deserve. So we're changing that, we're evolving, we're becoming better in every aspect of our life because we truly wanna glow up, we truly wanna to move forward. We just don't want to do it aesthetically. We want to do it wholeheartedly with every fiber of our being. So let's go ahead and get into these reasons, starting with number three. So the number three reason why I was getting played in my relationships over and over again was because I was getting bullied into staying. 
I was getting bullied by these raggedy, dusty partners into staying in a relationship that deep within myself, I knew was beneath me. I knew a lot of the people who I was dealing with were actually beneath me. I knew that they were people who weren't really on my level, even if my level hadn't actually gotten to where I really wanted it to be because we're constantly improving you guys. Come on, I've said it several times. Go watch my other videos. But we're constantly improving. However, the drive and the ambition and the tenacity tenacity that I had within myself to become a better person didn't match the partners who I was with. So I really got bullied into staying. And I'm not saying that it's something that they didn't play a role in when it comes to their negative behaviors. And when people are narcissistic or sociopathic and they try to brainwash you and target you, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not condoning or advocating any of their behavior. But what I'm saying is that I have my own power and I could have said no. I could have said no. And the reason why I did not say no is because I feared loneliness. I feared being alone. This was a time in my life where I really put relationship and partner and love and men at the center of my life. And it was actually killing me. Okay. I was afraid of being lonely. I was afraid of not having anyone to come home to at night. I was afraid of not having anyone to lay next to me at night. And that's something that gets a lot of us, whether we're men or women, whether we're gender specific or non-gender specific, that's what gets a lot of us caught up in negative situations with people where we end up getting abused is because ultimately we're afraid of being alone. We're afraid of facing ourselves in the mirror. We're afraid of doing the self-reflection work and actually digging deep into the things that have hurt us, dealing with those things so we can become a better person. It's scary. Healing is the hardest thing you can ever do in your life. And don't let anybody here on this Beyonce's internet try to fool you into thinking it's not. Healing is scarier than going to war. Healing is scarier than having a child. Healing is scarier than stepping up and being a parent. Healing is scarier than going to college. Healing is scarier than facing a burglar in your house. Cause I literally have faced a burglar in my house. That's an interesting story time that I have on another channel, but I digress. It's the hardest thing you can do to heal. It's the hardest thing in the world that you can do to actually put a mirror up to your own face and look at it to see who you actually are so that you can improve. It's really difficult people. And that's why so many people cower away from doing it. And that's why I feel like this number three reason of being bullied into staying is a tactic that so many people who are abusers use. They use this tactic because they know people are afraid to heal. They know people are victimized. They know people have been through trauma that they haven't dealt with and they boop tap into it. Okay, who was that? Sweetie, tap, tap, tap in. Yeah, they tap into it because if they know that you're afraid to heal, they can use it against you. In every situation, in every moment of every day, when you want to improve yourself and they don't want to let go and they try to keep you coveted to them or when you ask them to improve, they use these things against you. They use your insecurities against you. And one of mine was fearing being lonely. I also had low self-esteem because I didn't really like the person who was looking back at me in the mirror. The low self-esteem centers from the insecurity and whatever it is that you may have in your life that you are insecure about, just know that people can use that against you, okay? When it comes to forcing you to be in relationships or trying to manipulate you and brainwash you into being in relationships that are actually codependent, toxic, and abusive. So with that being said, let's move on to number two. So the number two reason, you guys, as to why I got played and continue to get played and ultimately played myself in all of the relationships or situationships that I was in or just dealings with people who I was romantically interested in, the second reason is that I did not make decisions for myself. I let others think for me and I let others choose for me when I was the one who should have been making the decision. Now, I don't know exactly where this stems from. If I actually think on it, it's probably a lack of confidence that comes from childhood. That's really what I feel like it is. Like when someone is indecisive or they struggle to make choices, it's probably because either someone criticized them for making the choices that they made when they were really young or in their formative years, they were more than likely criticized for the choices that they made either by parents or siblings or close friends, even teachers or people who were supposed to be role models or mentors in people's life. Or there could have been situations where people who struggle with making decisions may have made certain decisions in their life that backfired or had repercussive results in their life. So those decisions were psychologically categorized as poor decisions. And if it happened over and over again, more than likely it created 
created some type of foundation with those people to where they assumed automatically, chemically, through the chemistry of your brain that you don't know how to make decisions, okay? And I just wanna say this, like I say in every video, I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers and I'm definitely not always right. I'm also not a doctor, lawyer, or psychologist. I'm just taking the experience that I've learned and actually applying it to my life and my observations so I can deductively reason different situations that go on in life that we all face or deal with so that we can understand why it happens and then prevent it. Just wanted to make that clear. But yes, this is a big reason why I feel like I was played consistently, constantly in almost every relationship that I was in, in some way, shape or form. It doesn't always have to mean cheating. It doesn't always have to mean some type of infidelity or, you know, just extremely destructive behavior, but it could definitely be something that escalates over time. It could be something big. It could be something small. But if you feel like you're not in a healthy relationship or you feel like you're constantly in toxic relationships or people are constantly playing over you and, you know, walking all over you, what do the kids say? Playing in your face? Yeah, that's probably because of one of these reasons. And the fact that I was not making decisions for myself was something that really hindered me, not just in my relationships, but in my friendships. When it comes to my career, I was not strong enough or confident enough to have faith in my own thoughts and the choices that I was making in order to process information and realize where I was being walked all over. I feel like all of these reasons honestly center around insecurity. All of these reasons center around a particular belief in your mind or a delusion, actually, because that's what it is. It's delusion. It's being delusional. It's creating delusions. It's centered around those delusional beliefs that you have in your mind that you feel like you only deserve a certain thing or you feel like your life has to be a certain way. And those delusions work both ways because some people have delusions of grandeur where they feel like they deserve more than they actually do. Some people have delusions of inferiority where they feel like they deserve less than what they actually do, but it's all created by a false belief or a false realization in your mind about how you feel things should go. So for me, I ended up learning that it's okay to feel the way I feel, which then helped me to be confident and comfortable in my decisions. Now, you're gonna have to watch me for a while to really figure out how to change this because it's a process. It's not just a quick fix where you can just have confidence one day. It's not just a quick fix where you can just be, you know, secure with yourself and, and drop all of your insecurities. It's something that's takes a lot of hard work and dedication and it's something that you can't fake. And you might think that it's easy because a lot of these fake influencers out here are doing fake things to tell you that they have fake results to trick you into buying something or doing something for yourself that doesn't actually fit with what you need to do in your life. But I'm here to tell you that if you really want to dedicate yourself to the healing journey and you really want to become a better person and have a true glow up, it's worth it. It's worth the investment 110%. And it's only going to work if you really dive in head first into the whole situation. Because if you dip a toe and then you renege and you come out of it, you're not going to respect yourself anymore. So whatever you've been dealing with that you wanted to fix by dipping a toe in the healing pool is going to be more magnified if you give up and you don't heal. So it's going to be even harder for you to process your life. I think for me, thinking for myself was something difficult because the way I grew up wasn't necessarily horrible, but I had a single mom and she had to really fight to get me in a lot of opportunities that weren't actually accessible to a majority of my peers. So I'm from Chicago, you guys, but being in that environment, there are a lot of people who were my peers, young minority children who did not have a lot of the opportunities I had. My mom fought to get me in a different school than the regular public schools in our neighborhood. My mom fought to have me in extracurricular activities and programs. My mom fought to make sure that I wasn't watching things on TV that I had no business watching. And it was a lot of sacrifice and it was a lot of pressure, which then resulted on me having that pressure. So I lost a lot of confidence in my decisions, not because she was criticizing my decisions, but actually more so the fact that I felt like I was on such thin ice. I felt like I was always walking on eggshells and I could never do anything wrong because I felt pressure from our situation because I knew how hard she was working and I didn't want to fuck shit up. That's pretty much what it was. So I always asked people people, should I really do this? Should I really go here? Should I really be involving myself in this? It's like, I never really trusted what I actually felt or what I actually wanted because I never really had the opportunity to make decisions just off the fly. Because if I were to do something at the park, if I were to climb
climb a tree with all my friends and then jump out of that tree and break my leg or break my arm or something, then I had to think about the consequences that would come to my mother and the amount of time, energy, effort, and money that she would have to devote to trying to make me healed. And I think that's why I ended up falling into that trap of kind of losing my autonomy and allowing other people to make decisions for me because I never wanted to like inconvenience another person. I never wanted to make someone else have to pay for something that I did because I grew up in that type of environment. And I love my mother. God rest her soul. She was a beautiful woman and she definitely taught me a lot of great things about myself. And she is most definitely the reason why I am who I am and why I've become so successful in my own right. But it wasn't necessarily fair to either of us. It's just, that's the reality of what it is. And I've done the work that I can do and continue to do the work that I feel like I should do to try to change that dynamic within myself and communicate clearly to my children that they don't have to feel like that, that everything will always work out and be resolved no matter what choice they decide to make. It'll work out the way it needs to work out. And now for the number one reason why I continued to get played in every f***ing relationship. So you guys, the number one reason why I got played in all my relationships, we've kind of touched on it already, is these delusions, child. These delusions, these delusions in the mind. The mind is playing tricks on you, okay? I created stories in my mind of what reality was. And and bear with me, bear with me. Because I think this is a lot of the reason why we have so much discord between single people and people in relationships relationships out here on these podcasts and in social media world, social media land is because a lot of people who are couples feel like single people are jealous of them. And a lot of people who are single feel like couple people are jealous of them. And I feel like that's actually true. Girl, bye. Mm-hmm. Y'all, I'm always hitting the damn mic. And I feel like that's actually true though, for real. It it is true. When I've been in relationships, I felt like single people were jealous of me. And when I got out of relationships, I felt like people in relationships were jealous of me. However, this is what I will say to this whole situation, is that you are more likely to be jealous of a single person while you're in a relationship if you're insecure or delusional about your relationship and you're putting on a front to make it seem like it's better than what it is, right? Right? You're more likely to be jealous of a person in a relationship when you're single if you are not actually doing the self-development work that you need to do and actually dealing with your shit while you're single. That will make you more likely to be jealous of a person in a happy relationship because I'm not gonna say that all people in relationships are miserable. However, there's quite a few. There's quite a few women who are insecure who only stay in relationships because they feel like they need a man, okay? And men do the same thing and they're only in relationships with women because they feel like they need a woman or they literally need some type of resources from that woman but people in general gravitate towards relationships and staying in unhealthy relationships because they have some type of insecurity within themselves they have some type of void that has been like basically a gaping hole created from some type of trauma that they don't want to deal with and they're trying to fill that hole and pack it with these coping mechanisms or outside things I kind of talked about this in my video about embracing being single so if you want to watch that video be sure to go check it out after this one I will link it below in the comment section and in the description box you guys but that's what it is a lot of people try to pack and fill the holes of trauma and pain and heartbreak and sadness with other things that don't actually fill that hole so those are the types of people who end up in relationships being jealous of single people and feeling like they have to go my man my man my man everywhere okay and the types of people who end up being single who actually don't take that time and put it to good use and make value out of it when it comes to improving themselves those are the ones who end up mad at people who are in relationships however I was very delusional when it comes to the people who I was dealing with okay I was delusional as fuck and I was acting like it was a lot better than what it really was I don't think that's everybody because I feel like relationships definitely go through hurdles relationships definitely have ebbs and flows they have hills and valleys okay we know any synonym for an ebb and a flow that's what a relationship is you have to ride the wave you have to get into it but you also have to have a partner that's willing to get into it with you and be there with you even if you have rough times you have to really be strategic about your partner because they have to 
be the type of person who is going to protect your emotions as much as possible. Like I understand that when people are hurt, they may not necessarily have as much of a care for others when they're in a very emotionally volatile position themselves. But if someone really loves you and cares about you, they are not going to want to see you upset. They're not going to want to see you hurt. And they're not going to want to put you in a very vulnerable or precarious situation when it either comes to your physical safety, your mental, emotional, or spiritual safety. They're not going to do that. So a lot of the people who I was dealing with, you guys, were definitely people who did not have my best interest at heart. They were actually enemies. And we can talk about that as well. Um, But they were actually enemies. And I was being delusional about how much they really cared about me and the things that were going down in the relationship. It was not what it was supposed to be. And I was acting like it was. And I was lying to myself because again, I was insecure and I did not want to deal with myself to make myself feel more whole. So basically what I want you guys to understand and take from this video is that a lot of times we like to blame the other person who played us for the fact that we got played. And I'm not saying that they aren't at fault. Again, I'm not saying that I advocate or condone any of the behavior of people who try to play people or capitalize off of insecurities. But what I'm saying is that if you want to avoid being played and if you want to avoid those negative people. You got to take some accountability when it comes to what you're allowing, how you're seeing the situation, and what type of delusions that you allow to fester within the crevices of your own mind. That's what I want you to take from this video. Understand that you can only put so much blame on another person before you have to turn the camera around or turn the mirror around and point it at yourself. And also, just so you guys know, when you're in that victim mentality, and you're always blaming someone else for the situations that you find yourself in, even if they had a role to play. Even, okay, please hear me when I say this, work with me, follow me, don't fall off. Even if they had a role to play and even if they were just a dog, sh dirt bag, dirty booty crack, or bit you still have power. You still have a responsibility to yourself. So are you just gonna let that person take all of your power away and you not say or do anything about it? Are you just gonna let that person walk around and basically stomp all over the white sofa of your life and your soul and your spirit like the Rick James and Charlie Murphy skit on Dave Chappelle? Are you just gonna let that person just fuck your couch, your life? You know, like, are you going to let that person just do that? Because that's what you're saying when you constantly want to blame the other person for what you allowed. You're giving your power to them. And then every single person that comes after them, you're giving another piece of your power to them. What does that leave you with? Does that leave you with anything beneficial? Does that leave you with any prosperity or health or happiness? No, it doesn't. So even though it may hurt to turn the mirror around at yourself, ultimately in the long run, it's going to be beneficial to you because you're gonna end up being able to reclaim the power that God gave you, okay? And I'm not a Bible thumper or anything like that, but whatever you believe in, whether it's God, Buddha, Allah, the most high, the universe, source, I don't care what you believe in or what you call it, whoever your creator is gave you a certain level of power that they want you to be able to use and utilize for the things that you were brought on this earth to do, for the gifts that you have within yourself. So if you're constantly allowing other people people to take that power by being a continuous perpetual victim, then how are you going to reach those goals that you have? How are you going to do what you have on that vision board? How are you going to show up in your life? How are you going to show up for your family and your children? You can't. So at some point, it takes a certain amount of self-reflection and accountability to realize that, you know what? <laughs> I sure did. I did that. I fucked up and I did that. And now I see it. And now that I see it, I can make a change. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, put some comments below and let me know what you think of my commentary on this particular topic. I love it here. I hope you do as well. Also, let me know in the comments any other topics that you want me to talk about and I really just appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here until the end. Like the video, subscribe, share it with someone who you think needs to hear it, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. There's so many circumstances in life in which you are not 100% a victim. One of the main ways for you to grow in this life and to have better experiences is for you to be able to hold yourself accountable for the things that you have done and the role and the part that you have played in your own experiences. When you have a constant victim mentality, 
you're essentially putting the responsibility of your life on the hands of someone else that everything that happens is down to what someone else has done to you we are responsible for ourselves and our own lives and we have to give ourselves that responsibility over our lives it's easy to take on board a victim mentality because it takes away the responsibility that we have for ourselves so when you see people who are perpetual victims it's because they don't usually want to take that responsibility i just feel like there's just not enough people who self-critique there's not enough people who are able to sit with themselves and say oh this is where i went wrong but how do you grow how do you move forward how do you heal how do you move on how do you stop being a victim critique yourself in a way in which gives you that self-awareness and self-acknowledgement as to your experiences and to your own actions